Hello everybody, uh, this is a new episode uh, talking about the different traction we have and uh, which one I choose and our team choose and why. So we are here in the theory about traction uh, in the in the whole spe spectrum of uh, ESD training and uh, we will see why traction seems unavoidable and which are the different weapons we have to obtain traction with the pro and cons for each type of device. First, uh, in fact, in current life, nobody is cutting without traction. The hairdresser use traction to cut hair. Uh, the kids learn to cut with traction, with their second hands tracting the paper. Um, on demand cut uh, everything with attraction or something that stabilizes and try to stretch what they are cutting and there are a lot of tutorials uh, on the web to cut ropes uh, with uh, traction because without it's very difficult to obtain uh, the uh, cutting of the different uh, part of the rope so please think about in real life you always uh, use your second hand to track in order to have a precise and effective cutting. Why traction is unavoidable? First, because we want to go into a virtual space, which is submucosa. And if we use conventional technique without any traction, this space is very narrow and it's very difficult with the scope to go under. You have to use um, strong injection with macromolecular molecules in order to open the space and to increase the space in order to be able to put the cap under uh, the lesion. But if you use traction, the opening of the, on, the entrance into the submucosa will be far more easy. And finally, if you use a multipolar traction with a strong force, you will have, a, a, you elevate in fact the mucosa in order to create a space which is large enough to let the scope pass through without having to use your low, uh, your down row, because you can stay tangential to the mucosa, you will have a passage through the submucosa to cut everything without going down. And it's very important and it's really simple to go straight in order to have to to use your cap to go under the mucosa, which is one of the very difficult parts of ESD, um, in fact. It can be also very helpful when you have bleeding, because uh, the main problem when you, you have a bleeding that begins is to see where comes uh, the bleeding point. And sometimes it's very difficult to open the space enough by dissecting uh, and get um, a, an enough large area to uh, see where the bleeding point is coming and how to deal with. So you will first try to coagulate, you will try first to open the space to increase your visibility uh, to get um, a good uh, visibility on the vessel. But sometimes, if traction is not uh, uh, placed at the time of the bleeding, it's also an option to put the, the traction device on the lesion to tract and to open the space in order to clearly see uh, where the bleeding point is and how you can um, obtain hemostasis with a clear view and a clear exposure of the area. And you will see now, thanks to the traction, mucosa is stretched, bleeding point will be visible and quite easy to obtain hemostasis because now you see where the bleeding comes from. So traction can also be uh, an option to obtain a good exposure in case of bleeding. So why is traction unavoidable is also uh, a problem of efficacy. Because if you cut uh, submucosa without any traction, you will need a lot of cutting, a lot of cut uh, spikes in order to cover all the surface of the submucosa. But with traction, 
you mm. you have a kind of condensation of the submucosal fibers mm. and therefore they are more compressed then they they have a smaller space uh, due to the traction and therefore the number of cuts that are needed to obtain the complete cutting of the submucosa will be um, less than without any traction and with a strong traction you reduce again by concentrating all the fibers to the, the point on the opposite edge uh, it will reduce again the number of uh, cut strike you need and therefore uh, clearly you will reduce the, the duration of the procedure because you will have to cut less by cutting more fibers in any uh, cutting. For me there are two different kinds of traction. The traction which is here to facilitate conventional ESD cases, to accelerate learning curve for trainees, to improve effectiveness, to improve exposure and safety and to go faster. And for this uh, we are not talking about uh, ESDs you are not able to do without traction, but the aim of traction is to improve effectiveness and reduce the duration to go towards an ESD which is safer, faster and easier with a shorter learning curve. In our practice, we do nothing without traction or almost nothing. Um, I mean, we go back to no traction for trainees in order to train. but for being effective in a patient traction will always help and you can see that effectiveness of ESD have been uh, improved at any evolution of traction without traction our, our speed was between 15 and 25 square millimeter per minute with a single traction 35 to 40 uh, multipolar traction 45 to 50 and recently in the prospective study published in GIE we reached uh, with um, uh, 10 uh, guys uh, a speed of 66 square millimeters per minute why multipolar traction is effective compared to single traction is um, just due that a single traction will be very good at the beginning but when you dissect the rubber band is less stretched and therefore the angle of the mucosa with the muscle is very uh, close instead of having something that can be reopened thanks to a traction on the distal edge of the lesion with the power of being uh, tightened at the end. Just for a simulated lesion with a 5 by 5 cm lesion without fibrosis, an easy case, no problem, no, no problem of maneuverability. If you use uh, something with a speed of 15 square millimeter, you will have an ESD of 2 hours. Uh, with a double clip traction and 39 it will be a 50 minute and with a 60 square millimeter with an optimal traction you can reach 30 minutes and increase the number of patients you will be able to treat in your 8 hours time slot of your endoscopy unit. So after this uh, improvement of efficacy for conventional ESD there is another type of traction which is the very challenging case that are for me impossible without traction um, because in this case uh, it will just make the procedure feasible because traction will be able to open the space or change the conformation of the colon and push boundaries for lesion in the appendix in the iliosecal valve when they are fibrotic uh, when you are doing an intermuscular ESD it is also a good option to change column shape uh, for example to open the iliosecal valve or to change the angles in case of perpendicular approach so in this case it's different traction uh, duration and speed are not the main problem the main problem is to achieve the resection and treat the patient and in the different examples we have uh, with this kind of traction like iliosecal valve or like fibrotic lesion or uh, in diverticulas for example probably the, the, the most uh, important example is ESD in the appendix because without traction at least for me and except in the series uh, from uh, Japan where they use uh, underwater with um, uh, the cap which is cylindric it's almost impossible to perform ESD in the appendix except with a very strong traction because you will be able to stretch the device have a very strong traction to pull back 
the appendix outside its orifice and therefore to open the space and be able to dissect deeply into the appendix area and trying to cut the mucosa as deep as possible into uh, the uh, appendix space. So for me, ESD in the appendix is not feasible with my experience, uh, except with a very strong traction. And nevertheless, it's a good option to avoid surgery for patients, uh, especially when the lesion is completely uh, benign. Uh, the example now in, in a real case, uh, that was um, a, a serrated lesion with intramucosal adenocarcinoma into the appendix. Um, you had a lot of very strange mucus on the lesion. You can see that thanks to the attract traction, uh, we have a strong traction of the, the, the appendix. But once again, we can tighten again the, the, the device to improve traction at the end when appendix is outside and therefore when the rubber band is less stretched. And thanks to it, uh, we were able to go very deep in uh, the appendix and as soon as the lesion is cut, you can see that appendix area is going down into uh, the hole. And we had a long appendix mucosa with a complete R0 resection uh, of uh, this uh, intramucosal adenocarcinoma. In theory, the best traction is creating triangulation. Uh, it's a second end to expose and stretch and to maintain scope uh, sc stability. It's independent from the scope. Uh, therefore, you have no specimen tearing by scope movement. You don't change uh, the scope maneuverability. You have freedom in scope movement and no space conflict. It's easily deployed through the channel without scope exchange and easy to set up. It's adaptive. It means that you can change the force, adding tracking point, change the direction, and if possible, it's cheap or at least with an acceptable cost. This is all the devices or most of the devices that are now available on the market for traction uh, with two very different uh, concepts, uh, the one which are dependent from the scope and the one which are independent from the scope. And at the middle, you have robotic because it's dependent from the scope, but with two independent arms. For the devices that are dependent from the scope, the main problem is this dependence to the scope because when you move the scope, you also move the traction and it's very difficult to adjust the proximity to the cutting line with the scope if it moves the second end when you try to move. So they have tried to, to make softer devices with a kind of uh, small freedom, making some movement of the scope independent from the traction. But in fact, if you have to change really the close to the far view, you will also change the force of traction and the direction of it. So for me, at least, it's a little strange to be dependent and to be um, captive from this second arm uh, coming from the scope itself and not independent from it. All the single traction, so many ideas have been provided with magnets, with dental floss, with rubber band, with um, uh, snare outside the scope with two clips with magnets on it. It's always the same problem, very good at the beginning, but at the end uh, you lose traction because uh, uh, when the lesion is dissected, it comes to the opposite wall and therefore your traction that was very uh, tightened at the beginning become to fl be floppy and you have no traction at the end and you have no traction on the end of the resection. Uh, second point, the multi-traction strategy like wire loops or rubber bands, uh, multiple magnets, hernia nets to make a lot of traction, it's the same. You have better traction because you, you can add traction on the difficult areas, increasing the traction in a, a very difficult part. You can do it also by adding new rubber bands on, in a, uh, on an area. But once again, the main problem is that uh, the traction is going down while you are dissecting and the end is more difficult except by putting another clip with another rubber band at the end but it means that you will have many points on the opposite wall to remove at the end of your procedure. 
adaptive traction force uh, with uh, a pulley and several points of fixation. Um, it's interesting but not so easy to deploy in the right column. Uh, the, the line is something in conflict with the scope itself and you can break the line during the procedure so it's not totally perfect uh, because uh, the force um, is sometimes too difficult, too hard. You will break the mucosa and tear the lesion. Something is too low and the scope is moving the line by sliding on it. Um, it's not always very uh, stable in time. And uh, to be to be honest, I'm not really fond of this technique, um, except in the esophagus where the, the, the space is very small and, and it's difficult to obtain a good 90 degrees traction. Uh, with the adaptive traction device, the, the, the most uh, important benefit is that you have many points of traction. You can tighten it and increase force. Uh, so at the end, all the force will be on the last point. So you will facilitate the end of the procedure. But we are still working on the uh, handmade device to uh, make the setup easier, facilitate uh, installation, catching the loop, and um, uh, you will need a, a different learning curve in order to place it very well. It's not so difficult, but you have to be very precise, precise at the moment to catch the small loops. And um, we are working on it to, to facilitate the setup. Another point is that if you want to go back to retroflexion, this kind of traction that are at the middle of the lumen uh, can be in conflict with the scope. Uh, the robotic traction now with two independent arms it's very interesting uh, on a theoretical point of view effective now with the with the study coming from hong kong uh, and published by philip chu it seems very promising but for the moment the two arms are long and it's very far from the scope so you have an, an unprecise control of the margin of what you are doing because it's far from you and you don't see it very well and the other problem, even if it's our dream, in fact, to have two ends that we can adjust as we wish um, in force, in direction, in axis, um, is that for the moment it's, it seems very expensive for such a very frequent uh, procedure like ESD, expensive and very um, difficult to access. So we have to find something else for the moment to spread out ESD and uh, make patient able to, to obtain a R0 resection without follow-up. So in conclusion, um, what is the best tool or which tool, uh, tool I choose? Uh, waiting for a real robotic triangulation with short arms. The best tool is probably uh, something which is multipolar, adaptive, independent from the scope, easy to remove, but setup should be simplified. Miniaturization to pass easily in a preloaded clip uh, the device in a 3.2 mm channel and improve shape and adaptability uh, with new new kind of rubbers, new shape and we are working on to, to propose something industrialized more easy to access than the unmade uh, device for the moment which is very difficult to produce. Thank you very much and see you soon.